Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now answering question number 26, which is the last question on this specimen paper for the new IGCSE um, Cambridge 0580 syllabus, which will be examined from 2025 25, sorry, onwards. And um, this question here is about graph sketching. We're given this function f of x equals x times x plus 2 times x minus 3. On the diagram, sketch the graph of y equals f of x for minus x between minus 3 and 4. Show the values of the intersection with the axes. Okay, so this graph is a cubic graph because if you expand the brackets, you're going to get x cubed as the highest power. So this is a cubic graph. Okay, so we've got a cubic graph here, which we have to sketch. So now, what we should understand is a cubic graph can either have this type of shape, it's like up and then down and then up again, or they can have this type of shape, down and then up and then down again. What determines whether it's this shape or that shape? Well, it is the coefficient of x cubed. And if we expand the, x, the, the brackets, you'll have x times x times x, so it'll be a positive x cubed. All right, in which case it's going to be this shape, up and up. You have a positive x cubed coefficient, it looks like this. If it's a negative x cubed coefficient, it'll look like this. Okay, so it's going to have this type of shape. All right, up, down, and up. So that's the first thing we determine. Next, we find where does it cross the x-axis, where does it cross the y-axis. They're telling us to find those or show those intersections. So let's see first, where does it cross the y-axis. Now, we know that a graph crosses the y-axis when x equals 0 because the y-axis, on the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So it crosses the y-axis when x is 0. When x is 0, when you put 0 inside this function, you've got to gonna, you're going to have 0 because you'll have 0 times 2 times minus 3 because it's multiplied by 0, it will be 0. So it means it crosses through the origin, in fact. All right, so that's a, a point, that's a place where it crosses the x-axis, uh, the y-axis, sorry, and the x-axis as well. That's one of the places. How do you know where it crosses the x-axis? Well, on the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So we have to replace y equals 0. So we can see that we'll have x times x plus 2 times x minus 3 equals 0. So we have these three factors. When you multiply them together, you get 0. That means either the first factor is 0, so x equals 0. That's the point that we have here. Or x plus 2 equals 0 in either x plus 2 equals 0, in which case x equals negative 2, or x minus 3 equals 0, in which case x equals positive 3. So the places where it crosses the x-axis are the origin, minus 2, 0, and 3, 0. So we already have this marked. Now minus 2, 0, okay, is going to be somewhere, let's say, over here, and 3, 0 is going to be somewhere over here. Now I'm, I'm actually not going to mark those places, because I'm, I don't want to force myself to go through a certain point. I know it's going to go like this, down, and then back up somewhere uh, over here. And I know that basically that um, the distance between these two is less than the distance between those two. That's going to be where 3 is, that's going to be where negative 2 is. So we have 2, and we have 3. So basically, it's going to go down further on this side than it does up on this side. So something like this. I'm just going to draw it and make sure it goes through this point. I'll try to make sure it goes through that point. So it's going to look something like this. Missed. <laughs> okay, something like this. I'll try and do my best here. Has to, it has to go through the origin. Force to put it through the origin. So now it's going to go down a bit further than the other, this side, and then it's going to go up, up again, and it's going to go up through three. three. Okay, it's a bit too straight there, so let me just sort that out. And let me just try and make this a bit more... You shouldn't have multiple lines there. Okay, so just try and do your best. It's not that easy, especially with this thing here. And on this side, it's going to go up. Something like this. Okay, I guess they put these points here because when x is minus 3... We have minus 3 times um, minus 1 times minus 6. So it's going to go through this point here. And when x is 4, you're going to have 4 times 6 times 1. That's 24. Yeah. So it's going to 
it's going to end up going through these points 424 and minus 318 so we should show it going through those points okay so we have drawn it between those values minus 318 and let me just make that a bit neater that should be fine okay they don't expect perfection but there we have a cubic curve okay which goes through those points and I think that should get, give you all three marks so basically whenever you draw any curve you want to find well you think about what shape it has if it's quadratic it will have either have this shape or that's the shape linear it will be a straight line reciprocal it will have some sort of asymptotes okay, you have to work out what type of shape it is in this case it's cubic so it has either this shape up and up or this shape down and down what determines that the coefficient of x cubed if you expand this you're going to have a positive x cubed in the beginning so it's going to be this type of shape and then we find where it crosses the x and y axis so we're going to mark this place this is going to say show the values of the intersection that's minus two and that's three okay we try to be as accurate as you can it's just a sketch it doesn't have to be perfect perfect so as long as you don't have things like this happening like where the curve goes outwards like this or where it turns back on itself something like that you don't have these kind of things happening okay and you don't want to have like peaks like mountain peaks you don't want to have stuff like that happening so you have to try and be as neat as possible as accurate as possible okay but you won't be able to do it perfectly It'd be difficult all right so there's your answer uh, but you'll get the marks the full marks if you do something like this you get the full marks so there's your answer to part a sketching this cubic curve then part B says, expand and simplify x times x plus 2 times x minus 3. So what I will do is I'll first expand the these brackets. Now, when you have something where it's x plus and x plus, or just, just 1x and 1x multiplied, it's very easy. It's like you can use a pattern. Okay, so you can say you're going to have x squared. Then you're going to have the middle term will be the sum of those two numbers times x. So it's going to be 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. So it's minus x. And the last number will be the product of those two numbers, which is minus 6. Or we could actually expand it, you know, physically like, you know, 1 by 1. x times x, x squared. x times minus 3, minus 3x. Minus 2 times x, plus 2x. And 2 times minus 3, minus 6. But when you have just 1x and 1x, you can use this pattern. You have x squared, then for the x term, it's the sum, sum of those two. So 2 minus 3, minus 1x. And for the constant term, it's a product of those two. So it's going to be minus 6. And now we can expand the x. So we have x times x squared is x cubed. x times minus x is minus x squared. x times minus 6 minus 6x. So we're left with x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. Right, then it says a is the point 1, negative 6. The tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at a meets the y-axis at b find the coordinates of b okay so what is a tangent to a graph okay so a is a point one minus six so a is a point one minus six okay so let's say point a is over here somewhere okay say this is the point a i'm just gonna you know show you here to illustrate now a tangent is basically a straight line which touches the curve at the point where it's the tangent to the curve so this would touch the curve somewhere over here okay that would be a tangent it touches the curve at a now the tangent to a curve has the same gradient of the curve it has the same gradient of the curve at that point the gradient of the curve is constantly changing but at the point where you draw a tangent the tangent to the curve has the same gradient of the curve at that point so we got to find the point at which this tangent will hit the y-axis that's what it says here find the point where the tangent to the curve of y equals f of x at a meets the y-axis so this is going to be the point b where it hits the x the y-axis we've got to find what the coordinates of that point are all right so in order for us to do that what we need to do is we need to find the equation of the tangent we need to find the equation of this straight line. If I can find the equation of this straight line, I can find where it's going to hit the y-axis. Okay, so that's our objective here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and deal with that. So let's find the equation of the tangent to the curve at that point. Now, what we should understand is 
we have our, our equation of the curve y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 6x that's what we got when we expanded it so that's the equation of the curve all right so the gradient of the curve is given by the gradient function the gradient function is basically what you get when you differentiate this expression if it's a straight line it will have a constant gradient if it's a quadratic it changes cubic it changes so this is kind of constantly changing the gradient as we can see so to find the gradient at any particular point algebraically we find what's called dy dx which is the gradient function we differentiate this expression so to differentiate we multiply each term by its power and we take one from its power so three times x squared and this will be two times x to the power of one which you don't have to write the one there there's a one that we don't write it minus and this will give us minus six because when you differentiate an x term the x is dropped basically why because there's a power of one here one times minus minus six is negative six if you take one from the power you have x to the power of zero which is equal to one so basically the x term you just drop the x you keep the coefficient so this is the gradient function so if we find dy dx when x equals 1 at the point a we know at the point a x equals 1 so if I replace x equals 1 into the gradient function it will tell me the gradient of the curve at a so 3 times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 6 that gives me 3 minus 2 which is 1 um, which is 1 one second a, yeah 3x squared minus 2x minus 6 that's right so 3 minus 2 which is 1 1 minus 5 which minus 6 which is minus 5 sorry 3 minus 2 1 1 minus 6 minus 5 so we can say that the gradient of the tangent of this curve is equal to negative 5 so I know the gradient of this tangent is equal to negative 5 and I know it goes through the point A, which has the coordinates, as they told us, 1 and negative 6. Okay, so if I now think about the point A, which has coordinates 1, negative 6, and the gradient of the tangent at A is equal to negative 5, I can find the equation of this tangent using y equals m, or we can use, we can use this formula, y equals mx plus c, we can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, whichever one we prefer. Most students would prefer this in IGCSE, so I'll do this first. So we can replace the, we know that this is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate, this is the gradient, this is m. So we put y as minus 6, we have m as minus 5, have x as 1 plus c. So we can say you have minus 6 plus 5 equals c, so c equals negative 1. That is the point that we're looking for okay the y-intercept okay so it's going to be 0 negative 1 so the coordinates of b are going to be 0 negative 1 if we did it this way we have y minus the y coordinate so it's y minus minus 6 equals m which is minus 5 times x minus uh, 1 now we know at the at the uh, at b we know that the the value of x is 0 on the y-axis so I can replace the x with 0. I have y plus 6 equals minus 5 times minus 1. So y is equal to uh, 5 minus 6, which is equal to minus 1. So in either case, we end up with the, the, uh, you know, the point where it crosses the y-axis when x equals 0 at minus 1. Okay, we could have gone on um, you know, to find the actual equation of the line here first. I'll, I'll show you how to do it that way as well. This would be minus 5x plus 5. So you'd have y equals minus 5x minus 6. Well, minus 1, sorry. 5 minus 6 is minus 1. And so that's the y-intercept, minus 1. Okay, whichever way you do it, it's fine. But basically, there is the answer to this question. And I think that is the end of this paper. It seems quite long for a paper 2 because we're used to paper 2s being one and a half hours and also being able to use the calculator so here we have the answer to the final question of this paper question number 26 is all about basically sketching curves as well as differentiation
I guess I should have kept them as separate uh, videos, but it doesn't matter. I'll put them in both the I'll put them in both sketching curves, and I'll also put it in differentiation as well, in two different um, playlists. So that concludes this paper, which is the specimen paper of 2025. Again, if you want to see the actual paper itself, the PDF and the mark scheme, you can go to the description in the playlist and the links are there for that. If you'd like to find that playlist, you can click on this link at the end of the video. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in, um, so in, that, in that link, sorry, for this paper. But from this topic, from for sketching curves, I'll put the um, link over here and for um, uh, differentiation I'll put the link over here and I will have no room really for two more playlists but I'll put a playlist here for sketching curves from the previous syllabus which is the same thing and at the end of the video I'll put a card at the top here which will also be the playlist for differentiation from the old syllabus which is basically as I said the same thing but I'll just keep these two playlists for the new syllabus I thank you for watching and see you soon